Amen. Well, I think it's time for, perfect time for us to take a look at some things that will bring forth an attitude that with God I'm going to reach for the high calling in 2014. How many of you are going to reach a little higher? How many of you are committed to reach a little higher? How many of you, there's a little bit of room. There's a little bit of room for some improvement for you to get closer to God. How, how many of you? My hand's up. Both my hands are up. Hallelujah. Because we live in a pressurized time. We live in a time when so much is pushing against the world and against people. And now we Christians... We got the same pressures that the world has, but we also have a relationship with Jesus that we're doing everything we can to walk circumspectly. Amen? So that adds to our that adds to our stress. That adds to our commitment. That adds to the uh, to the desires that we have to go forward. Amen. I don't know about you, but we 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 are like fish in a fishbowl. People are watching. How many of you know that? How many of you know our, our witness is important? We can't just live any old way we want. We just can't do whatever we want. Uh, we need to recognize that we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Amen? We are ambassadors. That means that, uh, that, that it's okay that people watch us and can identify with us and say, I like what you have and I want what you have because of our witness and our attitude about God. Amen? Apostle Paul uh, came to that conclusion in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, if you'll turn there with me. How many of you have your Bibles with you? Amen. How how about all the Bibles? Let's make the devil mad and just lift the Bible up. The Word of God. Anybody happen to see David Jeremiah this morning? When he talked about the Word of God, the Word of God. He is one awesome Word man. And the Word of God is number one. In his life, when the word of God becomes number one, it'll, it'll energize you, it'll heal you, it'll cause you to walk in victory, it'll instruct you in the time of trouble. Amen? Philippians chapter 3, looking at the message theme for a few moments this morning, pressing towards the mark of the high calling. My sermon title, pressing towards the mark of the high calling. If Apostle Paul was still pressing, so were we. If Apostle Paul that wrote 13 books of the New Testament is still seeking to get closer to God, then how many of you believe there's room for us to seek him to want to get closer to him? Amen. My desire is, Lord, I'll be more like you tomorrow than I was yesterday. Uh, Lord, that I would would feel your presence in a greater way tomorrow than I did yesterday. Amen. Is anybody with me? Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. In verse 14, Paul says, I press, I press, I press towards the mark. How many of you know if you're pressing towards something, you're working at it? How many of you know you're striving at it? You're working to improve, amen? When a, when a person goes to the gym to work out, uh, their purpose isn't just to go to work out. Their purpose is to get better the next day than they were yesterday. Amen? To build up some muscle. uh, To be able to be stronger in what they do. To be able to carry more weight than they did uh, the previous time uh, they went there. Paul said, I press towards the mark. I'm pressing towards the mark. Not just the mark. Not just because there's a a goal out there. Not just because there's a place that he wants to obtain. But he says, "I'm I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize. Somebody say the prize. For the prize. How many of you like rewards? How many of you appreciate rewards? Rewards from your, uh, from your employer or rewards from the work that you do. And, 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 and be able to say it was a good account. The, the reward that you have about feeling good about yourself. About doing and accomplishing some things uh, that make you feel uh, worthwhile. Amen. You see, everybody needs to be able to have the prize. Paul said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. 
How many of you know the prize of the high calling of God should be take preeminence over the prize of a good work on your job or uh, the prize of feeling good about yourself or uh, being, uh, being pumped up with a motivational teacher that tells you all the, all the exciting things that you can do if you just, if you just line up uh, with feeling good about yourself. How many of you know it's more than that? Paul said, I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That takes preeminence over feeling good about who you are. Amen? We need to be pressing. We need to be pressing. Listen, church, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to encourage you. I hope this is an encouraging message this morning uh, to bring you to the point uh, not to look to yesterday. Uh, don't, uh, don't go down 2014 in the rearview mirror of 2013. Now don't look back and talk about all the things that you should have done better and how you don't feel good about yourself and how you know, it would have been good if this would have happened and then that would have happened, but it didn't, so we're going to sit around and we're going to mope about what didn't happen. Let me tell you something. You can look out the windshield because the windshield is the future of your life. I look forward and say, and say like Paul said, I'm pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, verse 15, let us therefore as many as is mature. Now, how many of you know that there's a maturity issue here? How many of you know maturity means grow up? Maturity means know more about, uh, about tomorrow than you did yesterday. Maturity means I'm going to learn something in the process. How many of you are learning something in the process of life every day? You see, if you're not learning, if you're not progressing, if you're not learning some things, uh, then the 2014 is going to be another 2013. You see, if you just do the same thing uh, next year, as uh, this year, as we did last year, uh, we're not going to have any increase. We're not going to get any stronger. We're not going to get any closer to God. We're not going to have any improvement because we're just going through the motions of doing the same thing. You heard me tell you the story about uh, the person that, uh, that was working for a, a company for 20 years. And for 20 years, it's, he didn't get any raises. For 20 years, he, he, he didn't get any financial. He went to his boss after 20 years. And he said, I've been here for 20 years, and I haven't got any increase. I need to have a raise. The boss said to him, the reason why you haven't got a raise is because you don't have 20 years experience. You got one year experience repeated 20 times. Is anybody with me? You see, if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get the same result. Paul said, I'm pressing towards the mark. Paul said there's a prize of the high calling. Paul said I'm going to be better as I look forward. I'm going to increase in my knowledge. I'm going to increase in what I know. I'm going to learn how to walk in this great anointing. And he said, and let us therefore, as many as are mature, grown up enough to handle this, he said, be like, be like minded. And if in anything you are otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. I want God to reveal to me if I'm not thinking right. I want God to reveal to me if I'm not acting right. I want God to reveal to me this year if there's some things I need to make some adjustments. I don't want to get blinded. I don't want to have blinders on and be able to think that everything's okay when things aren't okay. God, work on me. Show me. I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm reaching towards a high calling. At the beginning of each year, it seems like many people will make new commitments. Many people will make resolutions. Has anybody here ever made, ever made a New Year's resolution? That means you're making a commitment this coming year. I didn't do it last year, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and that and the other thing. You know, I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to late. <laughs> Isn't that right? We make commitments. Amen. We're going to do that. Yes, we start going, man. We get it all worked out. We go. We join the latest, uh, the, the, the newest workout place, and we can go there, and we can get, our, get ourselves in, in shape, and we can do it. And we're all excited, and it lasts for about a month. And pretty soon we're so busy we can't make it that next time because we got a schedule. And pretty soon we're not going at all. And say, so, well, no problem. I'll, do, I'll make this commitment again next year. 
Many people will make these commitments and promises, and they'll try uh, to think of something that will improve their life. And I honor people for that. I think we should be always trying to strive for excellence. Anybody with me? How many of you think that's the right thing to do? They'll try to think of things that they need to do or stop doing that will make them a better person. I say praise God for that. But in this scripture, in this passage in Philippians, I believe that Paul has a similar idea. I believe Paul is evaluating some things not only in himself, uh, but in his future and his progress and his relationship with God. I think whether it's the Apostle Paul or whether it's Pastor George Walters or whether it's Kenny Gamble, uh, we all have a personal encounter and a personal relationship that we need to say, God, what can I do to get closer to you? Amen? And Apostle Paul wasn't any different. He says, Brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended in these scriptures. Are you with me? Paul is, is making it clear. He's, he's laying it down. He's, he's putting it on the line, if you will. He's bringing us uh, to the place. He says, I, in, in, verse, in verse 12, he said, it, uh, Not that I have already obtained... Or already am I uh, perfected or matured. Uh, but I'm pressing uh, that I may lay hold of that which Christ also had laid hold of me. In verse 13 of, of Philippians chapter 3. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I haven't got it yet. I haven't compl- I, I'm not where I need to be yet. Uh, but I'm pressing. But one thing that I do, forgetting those things. Listen to me. Forgetting those things uh, which are behind and reaching forward. Forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, uh, let us as many as are, uh, are, as are mature have this mind. And if anything, if we think otherwise, God will reveal it to us. Nevertheless, uh, to the degree that we have already obtained, let us walk. Uh, By the same rule, uh, let us be of the same mind as God and the Word of God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to rejoice in that. Pastor, I know these scriptures. Uh, I've read them before. Uh, That's good. Uh, Now that you have read them before, now you're being reminded uh, that Paul wants us to press forward. He wants us to improve next year. He wants this coming year to be the best year that you ever had. We don't have, I don't think we have a whole lot of years ahead of us. I believe we're getting closer to the end. I believe God's going to wrap this package up. I believe that there is such a thing as the coming of the Lord. I believe Jesus is coming for a church and coming for a bride without spot, without a blemish, without a wrinkle. I believe God's going to bring down his glory like never before. I believe there's going to be another big outpouring and a revival of God before the end time. And I believe God's going to bring it quickly. I believe the anointing's going to flow. I believe this world, it seems like it's, 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 a, it's in a self-destruction mode and the world seems to be uh, uh, going to hell in a handbasket. I want you to know that God's going to redeem. Uh, God's going to redeem the redeemed. And he's going to bring the church up to a high place. And it's going to be the church's greatest hour. And the power of God's going to move. Souls will be saved and lives will be changed. Hallelujah. Paul says, brethren, I count it not myself to have apprehended Paul says, but I've not completely grasped everything that I can for Christ. I'm not where I want to be yet. Can anybody else say that? I'm not where I want to be yet. I've got a desire inside of me to get closer to him. I've got a desire to uh, to do more for God. I've got a desire uh, to cross that finish line with victory and with the anointing, not dragging a cross, uh, not a weekly just barely making it, but I want to go across that finish line with gusto and with victory and with power and with anointing. I want God to say, well done, thy just and faithful servant. I've not yet let learn. Paul's saying, I haven't learned all the things I need to learn. I've not yet done all the things that I want to do for Christ. Paul was very was a very godly man. He was a very godly Christian, but even in his life, he knew that there was more that he could do for God. By the uplifted hand, how many of you can say, yes, Pastor, me too. I know, as much as I love the Lord, I know there's more that I can do for God. 
I know there's more room for me uh, to, uh, to, to uh, walk in a greater dimension of victory with him. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things. Paul said, forget those things which are behind. And meaning forgetting all a lot of times when we say forget the things that are behind, we're talking about the bad experiences, we're talking about those that hurt us, we're talking about the wounds that we had in our life, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about scars from childhood, we're talking about uh, bad relationships that we had and, 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 and we set them aside and we're trying to recover. Let me tell you, Paul was talking about more than just bad experiences. Is anybody with me? Listen to me a minute. Paul said, forget those things which are behind. Sometimes we, think we need to think about we, what we have done good and forget about them. Sometimes we need to quit camping on yesterday's great experience. Oh, yeah, I remember when the church was full, and I remember the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and, and, and I remember uh, back in those days when God would move, and, and people would be slain in the power all night long. And, and we, listen, that's yesterday. We can't camp on yesterday's outpouring. We can't camp on yesterday's anointing. We can't camp on what God did. Those are good things to remember uh, to show us that God is still on the throne. Uh, but Paul is saying, uh, now, now we can rest. Paul said, I'm not going to think about what I have done in the past. I'm going to look about what God has for me in the future. Yeah. Does anybody have any excitement for the future? Does anybody have any vision in this place that God's going to do something mighty with you? He's going to use you to change people's lives. He's going to see, use you to win souls to the kingdom. He's going to use you to impact the world and impact this community, to bring power and God's anointing into this community. He's going to use you to do it. Look at somebody next to you and say, he's going to use you. Paul was saying, I'm not going I'm I'm to forget about all the things, good, bad, and ugly in the past, uh, but I'm going to think about what I can do in the future. How many lives can I touch? How many hurting and broken people uh, can, I, uh, can God use uh, me to mend up? How many people can I reach out and tell them that they're loved and they really, uh, God really does love them? How many people can I help break through uh, the, uh, the hurts of the past and go forward? How many people can I touch? We must realize uh, that we are never, we are always in a never-ending battle. There's always something going on. There's always a battle going on. There's always an enemy trying to bring you down. And when you are in the middle of the battle, when you're in the middle of the fight, listen to me, church, when you're in the middle of the battle and the middle of the fight, you can't sit back on your laurels and find some little quiet place by the fireplace and sit back and wait for God to take you home. You can't do that. You know why? Because you're not home yet. When you get home, then you can shout the victory and say, Lord, I thank you. You've brought me all the way through. But until then, we still got a, we're, we're in the midst of a fight. We wrestle not against flesh and flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a real enemy out there that would try to bring all of us down. There's an enemy. The Bible says the thief comes with the steal and destroy and to kill. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you abundantly. And there's a real enemy, so don't quit. You're not home yet. It's not time to sit back and say it's all over. It's not time to sit back and say, well, I've done my part. I'm getting old now, so let the young generation run with this. No, 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 no. Paul was never ready to sit down and stop. He said, I've run a good race until I finished my course and laid up for me as a crown of righteousness that I can receive on the, from the righteous, the judge on that day. How many people do we got in, in this house that you're not ready to quit, but you're ready to go on and do great things for God? You're ready to muscle up for the things of God you're ready to catch a new vision and do what God's called you to do in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 it says be sober it says be vigilant why? Well, why should we be sober? what does be sober and vigilant mean? vigilant means have eyes to see and be watchful and always be watching like a good soldier that's on guard duty you don't know who's going to come up in the middle of the night you don't know who's going to sneak up on your blind side be vigilant and then it, and, and this would be sober. Don't be drunk on the things of the world. 
Don't be drunk on the, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, uh, on the glitter and the glamour and the excitement and all the things the world has to offer. Don't be drunk on that. A good soldier doesn't get himself entangled in the things of the world. Be vigilant. Be sober. Why? Because the adversary, your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. There's a real devil out there that's, uh, that wants to derail you, wants to derail your thinking, uh, wants to stop your progress, wants you to get feeling sorry for yourself, wants you to think you're the only one out there that really cares, wants you to think nobody's been hurt like you, and so uh, why don't you just quit? That's what the enemy would like to tell you. But that's when you need to gird yourself up and say to the enemy, Satan, I don't belong to you. I'm a child of the king. I'm going to do what it said in Ephesians 6. I'm going to stand and I'm going to put on the whole armor of God and I'm going to stand. And when I've done all, I'll stand because God is still on the throne and he's still got him more than enough. But somebody praise him with me this morning. You see, the devil's out there seeking, 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 looking for an opportunity to stop you. Why does he want to stop you? He wants to stop you because you're powerful in the things of God. He wants to stop you because there's an anointing resting on you. He wants to stop you because the future, the future of the destiny of this world depends on me and you. The church is going to stand and be all that God wants to be. We can't allow uh, the disappointments. We can't allow uh, these little uh, pitfalls. We can't allow the attack of the enemy to destroy our progress. You know why? Because I'm looking forward. I'm not looking back. This church has seen great years. Church, listen to me. It's a brand new year. So this church has seen great years. For 30 years, we've seen people saved. We've seen people set free by the power of God. We've seen people healed in this place, miraculous healings. We've seen God move in such a powerful way through the years. We've seen the glory of God fill this house where people couldn't even stand at times because of the anointing. We built buildings. We've, we have a college and, a, and, and, and an academy that is literally touching around the world and changing lives and causing people's lives to be changed. But we must decide, how can we best use these things that God's given us? How can we use this building and, and, and the souls have been saved and the lives have been changed and what we've learned to reach out and touch people? What can we do? Are we going to sit around and talk about how, how good and, and all the things that happened yesterday? Or are we going to look ahead and look forward and reach for the high calling of God and say, God, maybe this has been a good ministry. Maybe good things have happened, but we haven't seen nothing yet. God is still on the throne and there's still lives that need to be touched through the college and the school and the church. Reaching forward to those things which are before us, I press towards the mark, Paul said. What can you do to have a better relationship with Jesus? What can I do to draw closer to him? What can I do to help, help others hear the gospel message? What can I do when I realize that Jesus died so that people might be saved? His purpose to die on the cross wasn't that we could, have, uh, we could have bigger homes and more cars. He didn't die on the cross so we could gather around in, our, in the four walls of our church and say, us four and no more. He didn't die on the cross just so we could sit around and say, uh, and say I'm exclusive, I'm saved, I go to heaven, praise God, uh, too bad for the world, but look at me. That's not the reason he saved us. He saved us that we might have a, 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 a passion in our hearts and, and, and we might hurt for the lost and dying world and maybe we might weep over the undone and the broken until they come into the kingdom and we might do everything we can to share the gospel message. I challenge you this year. There's a couple of things that I want to share with you real quick uh, that it's going to take if, if, we're going to, if we're going to follow him this coming year. Like Paul said, and he said, I press towards the goal. I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing for something more. There's some things that have to take place. First of all, number one, if we're going to press towards the, uh, the goal, we're going to have to have great faith. I said we're going to have to have maybe greater faith. 
Maybe we're going to have to believe God in a greater way than we've ever believed him before. Oh, it's real easy. It's real easy uh, to believe uh, to, to believe God when you got all uh, when you got all the benefits in your in your work package. Oh, it's real easy uh, to believe God when you uh, when you know you got a good insurance program and you got a, uh, and, and you got a good retirement package and and you got uh, money in the bank and all. It's really it's really easy to say, "Oh, I'm believing God." Can we believe God? Can we have the kind of faith to believe God if everything is ripped out from under us and we don't have nothing? Can I say, God, I have you, and that's more than enough. I've got a God that's going to see me through. I've got a God that's bigger than any mountain and bigger than any circumstances. And God, I'm not going to fold because the world system is falling apart, but I'm going to stand because I got you, and you're a God of more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have to have that kind of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can't even please him if you don't have faith. This Christian walk isn't, isn't a, a, a walk that, 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 that depends on what I can feel, see, and touch. This Christian walk is the kind of walk uh, that I have to depend on what I can't see and what I can't feel and what I can't touch. And I read the word of God and God says that I am God more than enough. And I say, yes, Lord, I believe you. I don't see it yet. You want to talk about a faith walk? Spend a little time with uh, Lennon McDowell and, 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 and what it's like to go into a third world country and into the poorest section of the country and try to raise up a school and have all the children come, 50 children come to their school and that nobody's paying nothing because they can't afford it. How are you funding that? Uh, Lennon McDowell, how where are you getting your money from? How are you getting money to travel back and forth and to build the schools and get all the curriculum and and, and pay the teachers? How are you doing it? Well, that's when you get better get some great faith because God is still their source no matter what the circumstances are. Is anybody with me? We have we have to have great faith. I believe that without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. You must learn to trust him. Now listen, how many of you will take the challenge with me? Now Lord, I want to trust you more in 2014 than I've ever trusted you before. Lord, I want to trust you. Maybe I can't, maybe I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe I don't know what is going to happen next week. And maybe I'm not sure what's going on around me. But I serve a God that knows. Hallelujah. Not only do we have to have great faith if we're going to make this stand that Paul said when he said, I'm pressed for the mark. I'm pressing for the goal, the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have like-mindedness with him. Uh, the first thing is you have to have some great faith if you're going to do it. If you're going to press towards the mark in 2014 and your life is going to change, number two, oh, listen, number two, don't be a complainer. I said, don't be a complainer. In the Old Testament, you know what, uh, what made Israel, uh, what, what, what shut Israel down from moving into the promised land and getting the blessings of God? They were complainers. They grumble about this and complain about that and they wanted to go back to Egypt and eat the leeks and the garlics and, and, and they complained that, uh, that, that Moses didn't do a good job and, and they complained that God didn't give them enough uh, water, enough meat to eat until he gave them so much they choked on it. You start complaining about God, he'll answer your complaint and, 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 and he'll gorge you with what you think you don't have. Is anybody with me? Listen, church, the body of Christ should not be complainers. We've got too much to rejoice about. We've got too many things that's good in our life. Uh, I, I, my friend Holmes Williams is one of my dearest friends, pastors the largest church in the Caribbean, People's Cathedral. Uh, my pastor up in, up in Flat Rock, Alabama, uh, these two men are in their, uh, Holmes is in his 70s and, 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 and Virgil's in his 80s, and every time I get around them, all they do is talk about the goodness of God. They might have aches and pains and maybe they can't get up in the morning like they used to and maybe they have to still do some things to keep going but you never hear them complaining about it. And they're saying, oh, how good God is. I serve a God of more than enough. And God's always meeting my need according to his riches and glory. When we stop complaining and start praising, 
You start praising, you'll find out the power of God will start to move through us and your needs will be met. You see, we need to not complain. And then number three, number three, quickly, you must believe. You can't have faith unless you believe. You must really believe that the word of God is true. We must believe if we're gonna if we're gonna if we're gonna press towards the mark. Uh, let's have a, a belief system in us that believes God like we've never believed Him before. If God, if the Word of God said by His stripes we're healed, let's believe that God is really our healer, and He's a God of more than enough, and He'll heal you if you just have faith to believe it. Amen. You got a family member that needs to be saved, get, get saved. You've been praying for him. You've been seeking God. Now listen, what would, believe, what, what would happen if you would believe so much uh, for their souls to be saved? You would believe so much that God's going to send the right person by at the right time. That God would dispatch, dispatch an angel in their behalf uh, that they will come to the Lord because of your belief system. We must believe that the things that we receive from God are far better than the things that we can get from the pleasures of the world. First you, buy, first, you have to believe that he is. Believe that he is. If you don't believe that he is, you don't believe that he's going to do anything for you. Are you with me? This is more than just knowing God's existence. James chapter 2 and verse 19 says, We must believe that there is a God. We must believe that there is a God. And we must understand that the more we believe in him, the more real, the more reality comes in our life. And he's a God of more than enough. You must have a personal relationship with him. None of this is going to work for this coming year if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said to Nicodemus over in the corner as he's ministering to Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, uh, went to the synagogue every day. But Jesus said, Nicodemus, listen. You might be religious. You might think you know all about uh, the Word of God. You might think you know all about religious order. But he said, listen, here's the key. Unless a man is born again, unless you've had a personal encounter with him, unless you've had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll never even see the kingdom. Number four, I'm going to finish this tonight. You need to come back so we can, uh, so, so we can finish this uh, message and then break bread together. But number four, if you're going to reach for the high call and press towards the goal, you must communicate more with God. I said you must communicate with Him. Communication isn't a one-sided prayer. Anson talk.